Hi guys and welcome to another episode. Uh, today we have um, an interesting piece of uh, software uh, along with of course the uh, relevant piece of hardware uh, which comes with a standard 9 pin uh, D-sub uh, connector and a cable and actually it is a pen. Uh, it is an obsolete pen from the 80s uh, obsolete and um, discontinued many many years ago uh, because it works on CRT monitors uh, only and um, it is an interesting device of course it is an input device or used to be I am um, consists of a simple lens at the tip of the pen and a photo sensor inside um, the pen and that's pretty much what it is um, in other models you could also find a button um, to activate the pen but uh, this one uh, made by Trojan products back in the day there is no button so let's see how this works uh, how useful could it be back in the day what you could do um, if it is well actually it was compatible with games um, but also other applications like drawing and uh, graphic designs and stuff like that and um, why is this a failure but first of all let's see how this works and remember it works only on CRT screens um, I saw so, uh, something uh, like uh, it will be only possible to operate this um, on the uh, color monitor of the Amstrad so this is what I have here uh, for this test but um, I don't know why but uh, it should be working on every CRT from the old days so we have connected the uh, light pan um, at the back of the Amstrad on the in, inside the joystick port there is no light or anything you can see probably the lens is behind the tip um, and now we're gonna try to load the software just a, a simple device as I said a photo sensor is inside uh, no button to activate it or anything so probably this the state is always on I believe and um, yeah let's try to load the software and, and um, explore uh, the possibilities uh, what we can do what we could do with this little pen um, actually the principle is pretty simple it's not um, the, the, the idea is probably what we uh, we keep in mind is that the um, the light pen indicates the where uh, we are touching a pixel or a, sp a specific white area on the screen um, but uh, I think uh, it is better uh, there is some better way to put it and this is um, when actually we are pointing on the screen on some specific area because the screen um, is uh, refreshing all the time uh, there is this beep beam scanning uh, or based around this beam scanning principle which means of course that the screen keeps refreshing every microsecond or so we have uh, one pixel um, lead up on the screen only so by that time we can um, really identify when uh, the light pen touches the right um, uh, pixel on the screen and then uh, with the help of a video chip the computer can tell uh, which the position uh, what the position of this uh, specific pixel was now one other interesting thing is that not um, every light pen uh, every device like this back in the day was compatible uh, compatible with one another uh, because that was the way things were back then and of course it wasn't any science behind this it was just uh, they, they were uh, putting uh, the cables in the D-sub um, the other way around uh, little changes that could make um, the product incompatible to one another so that was pretty much how it was done now let's get back to our software we can see the Trojan products uh, software um, 
came up on the screen. And now we have to uh, make the real test. I'm going to uh, choose the instruction, see if I can make it. So there you go. Um, explanatory text. Uh, what it does uh, and what you can do um, potentially can help you with applications like uh, computer graphics or other applications or you can build your own application um, because this is what we used to call open source back then I don't think so but um, you can break into the um, this application coming from Virgin projects back then uh, the code is not locked it's free so you could take the subroutines um, how to control and or get the control and get the coordinates for whatever you need to do and here is explanatory text um, and take advantage of this code and this uh, subroutine in order to create uh, your own stuff which is uh, pretty interesting um, again um, the light pin just detects changes in brightness uh, or white spots of the screen pixels uh, when they are scanned by the CRT electron beam and uh, since the, um, the CRT scans the entire screen only uh, one pixel at a time the computer just can keep track um, of, so you can have the uh, the pen's position from the latest uh, timestamp that's practically what it is during the uh, 60s light pens were common on graphics terminals um, expanded in the uh, early 80s and mid 80s to some music workstations but also personal computers like um, the BBC Micro and um, some PC compatibles like the IBM um, PC uh, Junior uh, whatever you could have uh, with CGA or EGA graphics then of course the Micro uh, computers, the home micros, uh, the Ataris, the Commodores, the Amstrads and all that. Uh, so it was um, quite a success. But the thing is that um, really uh, you cannot hold your hand uh, if you're like a graphics professional or someone who needs to work with this thing uh, for a long time. I mean, uh, you'll, you'll get tired very, very soon. Um, Another example here, we can pick which microprocessor is used within the Amstrad computer. Just take your pick, white spot, this uh, brightness level can be detected. We picked the Z80 and of course the Z80. It was. Uh, pretty practical, impressive for the, the, the 80s of course. Uh, many things you could do. Uh, like uh, games, simple games like this one with a pile of uh, matches um, playing against the computer uh, but it has seen limited um, operation over time and uh, eventually the light pen is now an obsolete device again to me it comes as very interesting it was quite impressive again for uh, uh, the 80s, we can imagine how impressive that was back in the 60s, uh, but it didn't make it, so it is not a standard um, input device anymore. It didn't make it as a standard input device, and um, now it's a piece of uh, computer's uh, history, um, I assume, or, uh, or even um, gaming history. Why not? because it is based around, although it's not the same, but similar where we used to play with and those were the light guns. For those of you, um, you can remember the light guns introduced by uh, Nintendo and other manufacturers around the globe. Um, so, interesting device, um, you cannot find it anywhere. Um, it's not a standard uh, input device anymore not practical at all if you ask me uh, but quite interesting and impressive for um, back in the day uh, I keep playing um, around with it uh, presenting the um, uh, the way to use it but uh, again it's not very accurate it never was accurate uh, but kind of useful um, yeah, back in the day, 
so you just for some professionals back in the day but that was pretty much what it was um, and um, yeah uh, ultimately had no future uh, a simple device a clever device uh, if you ask me uh, very cheap device um, impressive to the eye uh, but just another piece of history and another piece of computing history again um, doesn't exist anymore. Thanks for watching guys. Um, I'll be catching you soon with another video. Um, I believe I'm hoping I can find the time. Um, yeah, many thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you will. Um, I'll be um, coming up with another video soon uh, with another retro system or device or something. So thanks again. Bye.